Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about Day 8, Treetop Treehouse of Advent of Code 2022. I'm going to be describing the puzzles and then I'm going to be explaining my solutions. If you want to check out my code, that's going to be in the GitHub repository which, is con which contains all of my code for Advent of Code 2022, all of the puzzles. So yeah, today you'll see me doing the explanations. However, I forgot to do a time lapse of me actually solving the puzzles, so you unfortunately will not get the music covered um, time lapse. Uh, but hopefully you enjoy the explanation, so let's jump into it now. Okay, so today I did not get on the global leaderboard again, which is okay. Um, let's look at how I did. So I got 211 on part one, which is pretty good. Um, and then on part two, I got rank 603 um, in about 18 minutes. Okay, anyways, let's talk about the puzzles. So um, in today's day, we have arrived in a forest and all the trees are planted in a grid, which is really weird. But apparently, um, it was that the previous expedition planted these trees as a reforestation effort, so that's good. Anyways, all the trees have different heights, so the elves have launched a quadcopter to get the heights of all the trees, so we know all the heights of the trees in this grid. What we are asked to do is find the number of visible trees. So a tree is defined as visible if all the other trees between it and an edge of the grid are shorter than it. So basically, if you're looking from the outside, if you can see a tree, um, then that tree counts as visible. So we need everything in its row or column on its way out uh, to be shorter. This is kind of like the game Skyscraper, if you're familiar with that. Okay, so, you know, when I read this puzzle, I was like, okay, this should be fairly, fairly simple. Um, all of these are single digit numbers, so all we have to do is process this grid, turn it into an array, um, and then just for each tree in the grid, we scan outwards to see if there are any trees um, taller than or as tall as that tree and then just add up all the trees that satisfy that condition. Okay, so let's take a look at my code. So first thing I did was read the input as usual, and then turn it into a grid of numbers by going line by line. So this is using Python list comprehension. And then we're going to split each line into its constituent characters by just casting it to a list, and then turn all of those elements into integers using the map function. Since map does not return um, a list, uh, we actually have to turn it into a list by explicitly turning that map object into a list. Um, a map object is like an iterable, it doesn't exactly function as a grid. Okay, um, and then what I did was I turned this into a numpy array because that's going to help us with finding the maximums on our way outside. So anyways, if you're not familiar with numpy, it's a Python scientific computing library. I think it's pretty ubiquitous in a lot of like high-tech projects or like machine learning, data science projects, it's used all over the place. So um, if you don't know about NumPy, I highly suggest you check it out. I'm going to link to it in the description below. So anyways, we now have a NumPy grid, uh, a NumPy array, a 2D array containing all of the numbers in our grid. And now this is nice and organized into a format that we can access easily. So we're going to go through every tree inside this grid um, just by looping through all of the rows. There are N rows and then all of the columns, there are M columns. So we just go row by row and then column by column. We're gonna get the heights of the current tree and then we're going to look in all four directions to see if there are any trees that are blocking this current tree from being viewed by the outside. So let's take the example of scanning downwards or rather, sorry, to the right um, to see if there are any trees there. So first, um, the problem statement says that if there are any trees on the outside or on the border, then they are immediately visible. So we don't need to worry about those. So for example, if this tree is already on the left edge, then we are good to go. Otherwise, we're going to look at all the trees up until this point. So to index that in a NumPy array, all we have to do is reference the rows that we want and the columns that we want. In this case, since we're scanning left, so I'll open this back up. Let's say we're taking a look at this seven right here. Actually, maybe I'll get the smaller input um, just to make things a bit more manageable. So let's say we're taking a look at this five over here. Um, we want to look at all of the characters to the left inside this grid. So what we're going to do first, again, if it's on the border, if it's already in the zeroth column, then we're good to go um, because it's just directly visible. Otherwise, we want to find all of the trees in the current row and any columns that are less than the current column index. So how we index that inside the NumPy array is we take the current row just by taking I, um, and then comma, the columns that we want are all the columns up to the current column, but not including the current column. So by indexing with I, comma, colon J, um, we can get all of the trees that are to the left of our current tree inside the current row. Um, so we want to check that the maximum, the tallest of all those trees does not exceed the height of our current tree. So we can just take the max of that slice 
Um, computing the max in NumPy is a bit finicky. We can do mp.amax, and that takes the maximum value inside an array. Anyways, we just check if there are any trees to the left um, with heights equal to or greater than our current height. If not, then we're good to go, and we can add one to our answer. So the rest are pretty similar. Um, this one is searching to the right. We need to add a plus one here because the start index for slices um, is inclusive. So over here, we're scanning to the right, um, and then we're going to scan downwards, oh, sorry, upwards, and then we're going to scan downwards. So if any of those four conditions are triggered, then we add this tree to our um, total tally, and then at the end, we just print it out. So um, using NumPy and these array slices, we can really efficiently, at least, I mean, not in terms of speed, but in terms of how fast I can code it, uh, we can get pretty fast the answer. Okay, anyways, I think this algorithm is like, um, well, we're iterating O n squared through uh, all of the trees, and then for each tree, we're scanning O n for each of them. Yeah, so basically, this is O n cubed, which is pretty slow, but the input size is only about 100, so this code is going to run fast enough. Okay, for part two, we have to do something a little bit more complicated, and I had to scrap all of my NumPy code. Basically, um, each tree has a scenic score. And the score is the product of its viewing distance in each of the four directions. So the viewing distance is defined as the number of trees that we can see from our current position. So it gives this example. If we have this five, then in the rightwards direction, our viewing distance is two because we can see two trees to the right. Um, we can see two trees, sorry, one tree to the left because this tree blocks our view of any other trees. And then we also have a viewing distance of one up top and of two down on the bottom because this five is blocking our view. So we multiply together all of our viewing distances to get the scenic score for any given tree. Um, so basically what I did was there was a bit of trouble here. Like it was a bit finicky. Um, all we have to do though is we go through all the trees again using this nested for loop. I created this array to mark the directions that we could possibly move in. So zero one represents rightwards, so incrementing columns. Um, zero negative one represents moving left, that's decrementing columns, and then we have moving downwards and then moving up. Anyways, um, we have this scenic score which is initiated at one, and then we're going to multiply together all of our viewing distances. So the viewing distance we can initialize as zero, um, and then we're just going to loop through all directions. So for each of the four directions, we initialize our distance to zero. I'm also going to keep track of two variables here, ii and jj, which represents our like current path of view. Or like we're going to be iterating in the given direction by di and dj, which we're just unpacking from a given element in this list. Um, and i and jj are just going to iterate through that direction. So initially they start out at i and j. In fact, we can refactor this a little bit. So now we have the first tree that we want to look at stored in this direction, um, stored in this direction in coordinates i, i, and j, j, and then we initialize our distance to zero. We're going to keep iterating while we're inside the grid, so just checking that our row is between zero and n, and our column is between zero and m. We're going to continue chugging along in this direction, incrementing our distance by one for every unit, um, but the trouble here comes from when we land at an edge versus when we like are stopped inside the grid. So when we stop at an edge, that is because this condition is triggered. So for example, if we look at this five over here, um, it's going to have a distance of two on the left, but like we've actually moved a total of three units before we stop. Because first, um, distance is one here, distance is two here, distance is three when we're outside the grid, and that's when we stop. But the distance has already gone to three, um, and we can't take it back. So what we actually need to do is, uh, what's this? If we are still within the grid, so if we're stopped inside the grid, something different happens. So if we're looking up top, um, we hit a distance of one over here, a distance of two over here, and then we stop. But in both of these instances, but in each of these cases, we want our viewing distance to be two. So on the left, we have three, three, that's two, and up top, that's three, five, that's two. But when we're looking to the left, um, our distance variable actually stores a total distance of three, which we do not want. Or rather, it does still contain a distance of two. I messed up. Um, it goes one, two, um, and then it stops before it gets to three because we haven't incremented the distance yet. Um, and when we're looking up top, we go one, and then we stop when we get to five, so the distance has only so far gone to one. Anyways, the idea is that we need to compensate when we're stopping inside the grid because we haven't incremented like 
we haven't incremented the coordinates ii and jj outside the grid yet and we've only we stopped before we hit the last tree that we can actually still see so what we need to do if we stop inside the grid so basically if we're inside the grid and our like the tree that we're looking at is taller than our current tree we still want to include this tree in the count so we're going to increment the distance by one anyways so um while like after looking at all of those trees in this current direction and we've stopped we multiply our viewing we multiply our scenic score by the distance um, that we can see in this direction. So that's how we compute the scenic score for every single tree inside the grid. So at the end, after we're done considering all four directions and we've computed the scenic score, we take the max of our running total, our answer, um, and the current scenic score. At the end, we can just print out our, our answer. Okay, so for day eight, today was a more straightforward puzzle. It didn't require too much, like, ingenuity um i mean there was some creative creativeness involved um, but it wasn't like day seven where we had to traverse through a tree and the implementation was a bit more challenging um certainly day eight had its own challenges but i want to say when i first saw this puzzle i didn't think it was going to be super hard um like like yesterday's so that's it for day eight of advent of code 2022 i hope you enjoyed the explanations if you want to check out my code again that's going to be in the repository which is linked to in the description if you have any questions comments or feedback feel free to leave it down below and i'll see you tomorrow for day nine thanks for watching